Hello, Saints. Welcome back. You know, I got uh, an interesting week coming up here. Actually, by the time you see this, it'll be my history. But I have two appointments with two different groups of people, both from the LDS Church, missionaries who want to come and see me. And they know exactly where I stand. I haven't said anything different. I haven't tried to pretend to be something I'm not. But they want to come and talk. So I figure here's an opportunity to preach the gospel to a couple of LDS boys, so actually even about four of them, uh, to for each visit. One will be on uh, uh, during the week on Thursday night, and uh, the other will be Sabbath evening about 7.30. And we'll see how that goes. Because I know that in their teaching, in their Book of Mormon, in, I think it's Second Nephi, they quote, where we're saved, they say we're saved by grace, and then they'll use the words and then the language, we're saved by grace. Uh, after, it says, and the text reads, and after all that we do. Otherwise, you're not saved by grace until you do everything you can first. Then you're saved by grace. Grace comes in and finishes it up. And I was wanting to find a way to preach the gospel to them where they would accept the gospel. Find real peace and joy in Jesus Christ. And then I got thinking about my own denomination, about my own brothers and sisters who share a similar faith of mine, and how often it's been so difficult to preach the gospel to them. I hope you're not one of them, but maybe you are. Do you believe that you are saved by grace? And Paul wrote in chapter 6, as he's talking about the results of, of justification, he says, verse 14, chapter 6 of Romans, For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Now, we know how some of the evangelicals might present that. You know, we're not under, we're under grace, we're not under the law, so the law's all done away with. You're saved by grace, go live the life however you want to live it, and we're good to go. But we have some issues there, don't we? And so, but do we have issues on the other side? Uh, have we made the law far more something than what it should be? Is it the law that commends us to God? That's a good question, probably, to be asking. Is it your obedience? your right doing, uh, things that make God love you, that commend you to God, where God says, okay, you're safe to save. You can come with me now. There's just something different that we're missing. You know, right now, as I'm, as I'm doing this, our pastor at Glendale is out doing a Jesus uh, seminar, uh, Lee Vendon thing, you know, that he does. He, uh, pastor Gary does this about three times a year or so. And, uh, and he's trying to get the message across to people about our security with Christ uh, and our relationship with him. Very, very important. Prayer, Bible study, and sharing the message, that three-legged stool. And, it's a, and, and so I'm, I'm wondering, have we got it? Uh, have the saints at Glendale really understood what it means to be under grace and not under law? Paul goes on in, in chapter 6 as he talks about this. He says, uh, if I can get my eyes to work. He says, what then shall we sin? Because we're under grace. Because yeah. we're not under law, but under grace. May it never be. That, see, that was the evangelical approach for many evangelicals I've met. He said, well, law is done away with. Live, with, live however you want. You're saved. Because you're saved by grace. And so... Paul's evidently anticipating this. So what? Should we, uh, should we sin? If we're not under law, but under grace? God, may it, he said, may it never be. Do you not know that when you present yourselves as someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? He talks about our commitment to what we believe. And he uses that terminology of slave. Now, I know in today's uh, uh, world, that's, uh, that whole thing is changing. They have this, this whole thing going on now, cancel culture. Uh, 
I don't know what the full tendency to that is, but if you're not following the narrative of someone else, they're going to cancel you as an individual, that anything you say isn't relevant because you would be a racist or et cetera, et cetera, a bigot of some sort. Here, Paul's using that very language. He's not saying that coming to Jesus doesn't mean you're not a slave anymore. He's just asking you whose slave you want to be. Now, Jesus talks about the yoke and the oxen, and that his yoke is light, not burdensome. Nonetheless, whose slave do you want to be? God's or Satan's? I'm still using that language. How do we understand that for our own experience? Living under grace is how we are saved. And it brings us into relationship. Whose slave are you? With Christ. And in that relationship, we grow and mature. After we come into the, into the relationship, obedience plays a part in the relationship. But it's not the basis of the relationship. It's not the call. We're not under the law in that sense, nor under its condemnation anymore. Remember Romans chapter 3, verse 20. He says, because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. But through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's where we begin to understand that while law has not been done away with or diminished, it's not the pathway to God. We're not under its condemnation. We're not under its rule, but the rule of Christ. What saves us is grace. God's grace. We lay hold of by faith in Christ alone. And by that, our obedience grows. Not the basis of our relationship with God. It's not the basis of our salvation, but the result of our salvation. And I tell, can I explain this to you as well as to my LDS friends? Are we getting pushback on how much uh, we have to do to, in order to be saved? When you look at the scale of justice, our sins on one side, the cross on the other side, to balance out the scales, how much of that side with the cross is us? How much of that side do we add to it? And if there's anything we add to that, then we're saved by the cross plus something else. And that can't be. We're saved by grace alone. Listen. Listen.